Hey everybody, welcome back to Laptop Seniors. Today we're going to talk about the Apensionado Visa, the retirement visa, the Jubilado Visa. And I'm going to tell you one of the questions that we get the most you know, when we start talking about Panama with people who have never been here, it's like, or they're thinking about moving somewhere else. It's like, well, what does it cost to get that? How long does it take? Is it hard? Those are the main questions. You know, and then there's the other usual questions that everybody asks about almost any country that you're thinking about maybe immigrating to um, or, you know, that type of thing. Are they safe? Is the health care good? Are the people friendly? Is it cheaper? You know, that's usually why you go somewhere else. Is it cheaper? Is it pretty? Is it nice? You know, and for all those questions, you know, the answer is yes. And it's warm year round. That's a big one, too. But again, for this, we're going to, you know, just really concentrate on the pensionado visa. How long is it going to typically take you to get that? And what is it going to cost you to get that? So as a frame of reference, in case you're looking other places, let me just bounce through before we put numbers. I'm going to put numbers up on the screen of what it cost us to do. The cheapest golden visa, similar type thing, golden visa in Europe is Latvia. And you have to stay there a year and it's re renewable every year. And you have to put 50,000 euros up which is about, I don't know, 60 grand American, $75,000 Canadian. And you got to keep that in the bank in one of their things, probably pulling not a whole lot of interest. That's the cheapest one there is in Europe. Most countries, generally speaking, are two, three, four, five hundred thousand euro or dollars, depending on where you are in order to get a visa. So bear that in mind when I'm putting numbers up on the screen here of what this costs. So let's start uh, at the beginning you know, conceptually, you can do this yourself and I'll, I'll sort of try to separate the numbers so you can see, well, this is what it's going to cost if I do it um, yourself. But I thought about it long and hard and we kicked it around and, you know, we, we have a little bit of Spanish, enough to certainly get by in any Spanish country, but not enough to do legal paperwork. And Again, if you're under a time crunch, because you only have six months to actually get your paperwork done from the moment that you start to get your first paper, whatever that first date is on your paper, you now have to present all your papers, all your documents, everything in Panama within six months. So, you know, once that six month window starts, you know, you're under the gun. And one of them would start would be if you say you're on Social Security or you're on CPP, that's Canada's Social Security, um, you know, you're going to get a letter every year from the government that says, hey, you get this much in Social Security. Here's what we're going to pay you each year. You need to get that letter certified either at U.S. Social Security or at the Canada Pension Fund. And then, in, you know, usually the government is then going to have to certify that the letter that the government agency gave you is actually a real government agency letter. You know, it's like, OK, um, and that takes time, different times in different countries. Again, in Canada, it took five months to get that done, which, you know, should have been probably, uh, you know, here's a Canadian government letter, federal government thing. Let me go to the computer, put in the person's Social Security number type thing. Oh, there it is. Does it match? Yes, it does. OK, you're good send it off and say, OK, I mean, that's probably about how long it should have taken, but it didn't. Um, in the US, uh, that thing took about three weeks to get done versus five months. So because because I have both because I'm a Canadian and American, both passports, both citizenships. So, you know, you can see the difference immediately in the countries. Funny because, you know, I'll do this in another video when I start talking about getting a driver's license in Panama, that actually reversed because when we were in Panama, the Canadian embassy was unbelievably lightning fast and the people were great, super helpful, even calling on the phone to kind of work out a problem where the American embassy, you know, takes months to get, you know, to get certification of your driver's license, sort of a different deal. So, and the reason I'm bringing it up is it really depends on where you're going and what you're trying to get certified in this process. Okay, so got a lawyer that was recommended by Panama Relocation Tours, Jackie Lang's company, and you know, we bought the book, it was in there. We didn't go on the tours because we had already been to Panama a couple times. And we contacted the lawyer in Panama City, I did it over email, and uh, she was great, handled everything. When we actually got to meet her, she had you know worked in government, 
as I recall, she was a, like a prosecutor or a judge or something like that. So in other words, she super knew the system. Um, very honest, totally on the up and up, really good person. And the cost was $2,200. That was her cost, $2,200. The government costs were another $400. So all in all, you're looking at $2,600 to get it done, okay? And if you wanted to do it yourself and handle all the paperwork and everything, well, then that section would only be the 400 the government costs. You could eliminate the 2200 We decided to go on and get the cedula, which is like a social security number. It stays with you for life. That was another $615, a lot more paperwork, a lot more other stuff that the lawyer had to deal with for two of us. Those numbers, by the way, are for two of us, not, for, not per person, but for a couple, okay? So if you add all that together, we're in $3,215. And we're done versus, again, the Latvia thing, 50,000 euro. So you can see dramatic difference in getting visas. And again, the schedule is as far as you can go without actually having citizenship. Now at home, you're gonna have some other charges and it's going to vary by the country that you're in. I'm gonna go through the Canadian charges and some American charges because I had to get both for some things. And so I'll go through those now just to kind of give you a rough idea. To get an RCMP check, which is similar to an FBI check, in other words, it's a records check. If you, you know, are you a criminal or not, that kind of thing. And you need fingerprinting and all that sort of stuff. So for us, it was essentially $147 US, to get, I'm converting everything into US, to get the Canadian RCMP records check, you know, your criminal record, uh, or no criminal record, ideally, <laughs> otherwise you're probably not going to get into the country. No criminal record, you know, and digital fingerprinting and all that stuff. It was $147. For the U.S., because I looked it up, it's $18 per person, and then whatever the fee is that the digital fingerprinting person or company is going to charge you, $18 per, you know, per person for the government. So 36 bucks there, U.S., and then whatever the fingerprinting place costs you and that could vary anywhere from $40 um, per person to maybe $50 a couple. Uh, hard to tell, it depends on where you go, but giving you a rough idea what things cost. Then you're going to need some documents certified. So what Panama looks for, uh, you can do it with a, with a pension that is not a government pension, like a corporate pension, but you're going to have to prove that it is for life and that there's money in the uh, corporate fund that will be able to pay this you know obviously they don't worry about a government so let's just center in on government for just a second so the government would be the US Social Security probably an EU Social Security type thing Canada's pension plan you know it's that sort of stuff you know as I mentioned they every year they're gonna give you a letter or you can just ask for the letter you know bring me up to date on what you owe me every year okay and they're gonna send you a letter that letter has to be certified, okay? And then the way to do that is you're gonna to have to go to a US Social Security office, get somebody there who is a, um, an officer, in other words, somebody who's just not working behind the desk, somebody who's a department head to sign it, they're gonna to have to stamp it, they're gonna to have to give their employee number so that it can be checked on, okay? You're gonna take that with you. For Canada CPP, again, because we had to do both, Canada CPP, you're going to have to get a letter from them. It'll come and in each instance. It's a here's your name. Here's your social security number or your social insurance number. And here's what you're getting paid per month forever. Same thing per month forever. You then need to take those things and send them back to the government to get those things certified that these are true. You didn't you know, fudge it and mess with the numbers or any of that sort of stuff. So we would go to the U.S. State Department or they would go to Canada's Global Affairs, which is Canada's State Department, or your country's government, okay? And they're gonna certify it and ideally put it into a Spanish language. Like um, for the US, the State Department added a, uh, a pastille, uh, it looks like the word looks like a postal, uh, I'm not sure how to say it, a pastille. So they basically they take the wording and turn it into Spanish. For in Canada, when Global Affairs certifies it, it's just going to be certified and then someone has to take it to the Panamanian Embassy and have that thing translated 
into Spanish and then certified by the embassy. Say, so you got a lot of certifications for one piece of paper. There's more detail to that, but that's generally, you know, you know, the overview. I'm sitting going, yeah, I don't want to do any of that. So I just paid two companies to just handle it for me. There was a US company, I'll put a link below, and there was a Canadian company that handled the Canadian side, put a link below, and they handled all of that. They just took care of it. Now, the American company was $153 plus the charge for FedEx to send it back to us, which I believe was another $65 because you know they were sending it from Washington to Canada. Um, you know, if you're in the U.S., it's obviously going to be less. Maybe it's going to be $30, $25. I don't know, depending on where you are. If you live in Washington, you can just walk in and just get it. So $153 plus a FedEx charge. Okay, so that's what the U.S. thing was. It took approximately three weeks to get it done, and they even caught a mistake because I got a note, email from them saying, hey, we're going to about to mail it, and then two days later, I got, hey, we caught a mistake. We had to go back to the State Department and have them fix it. <laughs> it's like, I would have never caught that in a million years. You know, and I would have assumed it was cool, gone along with it, went to Panama, handed the papers, and they would have went, well, this isn't good enough. And that would have been thousands of dollars wasted and time and had to start everything all over again because the six months would have ran out and I would have had to start the whole thing over again. So again, one of the good reasons to pay somebody to just handle this stuff. So $153 there plus a FedEx fee if it needs to be sent to you for Canada, it was $680 US, even though I'm paying Canadian, I'm doing the conversion, $680 all in, and they had a little bit more paperwork to do because marriage certificate, they had to get that certified, again, at the you know, global affairs, in addition to the social security type thing, and the RCMP check, and all of that stuff, they had to take papers in Ottawa and move them around, from you know global affairs, the State Department, over to the Panamanian Embassy, you know stamp, stamp, check, all that sort of stuff. So I just let somebody else do it. I suggest you do too. So right now for Canada, we're in roughly about forty-two, forty-three hundred dollars, and uh, you know we're around uh, thirty-eight hundred dollars, something like that, for the U.S. to just get it done. Somebody's handling it every step of the way. One of the things, just I'll tell you, when we got to Panama using the lawyer, which is another thing that is really handy, she didn't just do paperwork. When we got there, when we went into the office, there's stuff that needs to be filled out, and she's going through question by question. You know, and we're answering the questions, and she's, you know, well, and you know, I'm looking at the questions, and I'm not quite understanding because the translation is not perfect. You know, if you're using Google, so it would have been a problem. But with her there, and she speaks totally good English, no, 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 it doesn't mean that, it means this. Oh, well, that answer is different, that would give you this. Okay, great, and she's writing it down. So she's basically walking us through a pretty long sheet of questions, and there were probably, I don't know, 40, 50 questions there that we had to answer, and she's making sure that they are 100% on the money, that we are gonna have no problem when we go to immigration, because she's done this thousands of times. Again, invaluable. Then it's like, okay, we're good. We all right? Yeah, everything's good. Okay, let you know in a couple of days. I'll get an appointment for immigration and you know call you. She gets a hold of us and goes, here's your appointment. It's nine o'clock in the morning. It's at immigration, you know, the northern part of Panama City. Look for there'll be a guy. She sends a picture. I give a picture of the guy and his name. I for, I think his name was Anthony. And so he'll look for you. So we get there early, we go into immigration, you know, we sit and follow the instructions, go downstairs, sit in the chair, and we're just waiting. All of a sudden the guy comes up and he goes, hi, I'm Anthony. Hey, Anthony, how you doing? She says, just come with me. He's already got a number because he went to the desk and got a number. They take it almost like you're in a butcher's market where, you know, you pull the number at 52, next one is 53, 54, 55. You know, they take you in order and they got numbers on them and you're looking up on the screens and the screens have like A26, B16, that type of stuff. And because we're jubilado, retires, retired people in Panama go first for everything. You, know, like you go right up to the front of the line. There could be a hundred people waiting there if they're, you know, under, if they're not retired, uh, if they're not seniors, actually it's not retired, but if you're not a senior over a particular age, which I believe is 55 there, um, you know, you gotta wait 
Old people go first. Fantastic. So Anthony comes up, come with me, grabs our hand, walks us out. He sits and talks in Spanish to people, so to, to a person behind the counter, hands them the papers. They're checking. They're asking some questions. He asks me some questions, you know, just to, you know, cl clarify some things. I tell him, he tells her, blah, 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 sit in the chair, click, black, boom, click a picture. Okay, go sit over there. Take about 10 minutes. 10 minutes later, they hand us the, the, the visa cards and there's your temporary visa. You have a temporary visa that you can be in the country forever with that temporary visa. Um, and you'd also, if, you know, if you're going through this process, you want to have the multiple entry extension, you know, the option for multiple entry. Otherwise, it's sort of a problem if you want to leave the country and go back home for a while. When you have the multiple in, in, entry, you know, part of it added onto the visa, um, you know, like an addendum, you can go in and out of the country, no problem, they, they could care less, okay? So we obviously got that because when we were done with that initial process, we just left and went home. And the initial process took us two weeks. Got all that, everything I just described done, you know, the paperwork in Panama, meeting with the lawyer, and then we had the visas and we were done. So that's what you're gonna need in Panama City, two weeks to count on getting your temporary visa, which again, you could just stay there forever with the temporary. You just gotta keep getting it renewed every year. So that's the process for the temporary visa. It's the same process for the permanent one, and that will come three to four months later. So once you get the temporary, assuming you wanted the permanent one, I don't know why you wouldn't, you would then ask for the permanent one, but you gotta wait three or four months. We did ours end of August, early September. The permanent one was approved and done and everything in the middle of uh, December. So again, three to four months, somewhere in that range. And then you have to go back to Panama to actually pick that permanent visa up. We opted for the lawyer to actually go ahead and go for the Sedula one too, you know, so that nothing is ever tied to anything other than that number. One of the reasons, good reason for having a Sedula is if you, you know, unaware, and maybe you're in with a permanent visa right now and don't have a Sedula in Panama, one of the reasons is the permanent visas without a cedula is tied to your passport number. So if you have a US or Canadian passport or an EU passport, it's gonna have a number on it, that your visa is tied to that number. If, you, if, that, if your passport expires and you get a new passport, you now have to go through some rigmarole to get your visa changed to your new passport number. Every time that expires, you gotta redo that over again. Same thing for your driver's license. So everything gets tied to some number and the only one they have is your passport number. When you get a cedula, just like a social security number or a social insurance number in Canada, it's with you for life. You have it, it never changes. So you want to get a cedula so that any numbers, things that number didn't have to get tied to, you want to tie it to that number because it goes forever. Now, let me get a little clearer on the time. So the first thing that we applied for was because we happened to be in Florida at the time and wanted to go into the Social Security office. I wanted to get the Social Security that I was getting paid. I needed to get that document certified, you know, and authenticated and all that sort of stuff. OK, so the first stop was the Social Security office and asking them to send me the letter that they send every year around. Like, give me a new copy. You know, here's what we will pay you month by month for this year you know, and it's for life, okay? And government, they know that it's for life. The date on that, which was the first thing that we asked for of all of the documents, the date on that started the six month window running. That's what Panama, you need to get all the paperwork done in six months from beginning to end and be in Panama and present the papers within six months. So once I asked for that paper and they sent it with a date on it, and I still had to go around and get that thing you know, documents certified and authenticated at the State Department and stuff. But just to get that, that starts the meter running, so to speak, for time. So just want you to be aware of that. And again, depending on what country you're in, it might be slow or it might be fast. For us, it took virtually the entire six months. Then go to Panama and then as I just described, it took another four months to get the permanent visa done. So you're looking at 10 months, that's kind of the outset. It probably, well, I don't know how it would be any longer than that, really, because you, know, you only have six months to get the front part done, and then it'll take them roughly four months to give you your permanent after you, after you file for the temporary and ask for the permanent. So there's 10 months. 
that's the worst it's going to be. That's how long it's going to take. Now, if you happen to you know be able to get stuff really quickly, you might be able to pull the front part off in about maybe two months or three months, get to Panama, file, and then there's another four. So somewhere between six and seven months, I would guess, is probably the shortest time span. And again, 10 months is going to be probably the longest time span that it's going to take you to get your Pensionado visa, the permanent one, and get it done. And now you know the pricing, at least that we paid. I don't believe we got ripped off. I think it was a pretty fair price. Uh, I thought it would be a little bit less, but again, not really knowing. I've heard where other people have gotten it done and their pricing was definitely higher than ours. You know, instead of being 2,200 bucks for the lawyer, it was like $3,600 you know, for the lawyer to do two people and then so on and so forth. So, you know, again, hopefully this helps as a frame of reference. And also hopefully this helps on telling you what's involved and what it takes and time and everything to get the Pensionado visa in Panama. Hope that helps. And if you're thinking about Panama, highly recommend it. It's a wonderful country. It's really pretty here. It's beautiful. It's warm. It is super safe. If you're thinking about immigrating to another country or even being a snowbird in another country, now we're just coming here for the winter time from some cold place, highly recommend it. And you know, it would be good instead of just being a tourist to actually get the visas and that way you're never shut out. Everything is always good. As always, if you like this, you know, hit the like button and also the notification bell that tells you when a new lesson has you know, landed and you know, you'll get a notice going, hey, new video. And as always, subscribe to the channel. The more people that subscribe, the more YouTube tells other people about it. So if somebody else is wanting to know about Panama or any of the other things that we do, it's going to flag those particular videos for them. So until the next video and whenever we drop that baby, hopefully it'll be soon. See ya. Ooh.